We're getting a look at Nicole Hensley, who gets the start in game one for Minnesota. She's from Lakewood, Colorado, two-time Olympic gold, excuse me, two-time Olympic medalist, once gold in 2018. And you get a look at some of her stats from Lindenwood. On the other side, Erin Frankel was a monster at Northeastern, the two-time National Goaltender of the Year, 103 wins in college. 103 wins, that's the program record for Northeastern. She was so solid back in it, a Patty Kazmaier Award winner. And both of these goalies, I mean, every team in this league has strong goalies from start to finish. Some three, some four really great goaltenders on their roster. As you said, Bridget, it's the top line of forwards out there for both teams for Boston. It's Lauren Gable, Alina Mueller, and Hillary Knight. Top defensive pairing of Megan Keller and Sydney Morin with Aaron Frankel in goal. On the other side for Minnesota, it's Denisa Krizova with Taylor Heisey and Kendall Coyne Schofield on right wing. Top defensive pairing of Leah Steckline and Maggie Flaherty. Nicole Hensley is in goal for Minnesota. Your referees tonight are Kelly Cook and Jordan Decker. Linesmen are TJ Dockery and Kirsten Welsh. Yeah, I'm playing here tonight at the Songa Center, the home of the UMass Little Riverhawks, a really great rink. We saw the turnout at both the Ottawa and Toronto home openers, both sold out, and a great crowd on hand here tonight as well. Boston, team colors are forest green, gray, and white. Minnesota donning the road whites. Their team colors are purple, black, and white. They will be playing their home games this year at the Excel Center. This is Zumwinkle stepping through the red line as we're just a couple minutes in to the first game of the season for both of these two teams. Third overall game in the PWHL here in 2024. Things got going on New Year's Day up in Toronto, New York City with a 4-0 win in the first ever PWHL game. And then the record set for attendance in that second game in Ottawa, 8,318 fans in the stands for that one, the most at any pro women's hockey event in the history. But it was a upset by the visitors, a 3-2 win in overtime for Montreal over Ottawa. And the fans were into it up north of the border. Six teams in the league. Got Minnesota and Boston here. The last one from the States is New York. The three teams from Canada, Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa. The original six of the PWHL. At the blue line now, bouncing to the outside. This is Wenskowski. Behind the boards, excuse me, behind goal is Amanda Pelkey now, stepping through GG Marvin. Center ice it goes. And Megan Keller will retreat. Keller, one of the alternate captains for Boston from Farmington, Michigan. Silver medalist in 2022 at the Olympics, gold medalist in 2018. And no stranger here to Boston playing for college hockey at Boston University. Keller was a two-time Patty Kazmaier Award finalist at Boston College. Three-time first-team All-American as well. Frankel is out behind goal. Flicks it along the boards. Aaron Frankel from New York State. In the corner it goes, almost turned over as Boston tries to gain possession. Shimmied up ahead to the far side boards down into the Minnesota defensive zone. Nice crowd here on hand at the Songus Center. Cheers throughout the pregame ceremonies and at puck drop as well. We are off and running here in Boston. This is Brandt. Brandt looking for a feed across. And it bounced just past Taylor Girard. Girard, the ninth round pick of Boston in September's draft. Here's Hannah Brandt now. Brandt trying to steer it back the other way for Dark Angelo. To the blue line it goes. Jamie Lee Rattray. At the back with Jess Healy. Tossed ahead. Here comes Minnesota. Turned over right to Heisey. She scores! Taylor Heisey less than four minutes in. The number one overall pick in the draft scores the first PWHL goal on American ice. No surprise, it's Taylor Heisey scoring first. You'll watch on the replay going off the bar and in as that top line center, like you mentioned, the first overall draft pick going high over the glove of Aaron Frankel. Patty Kazmaier, award winner, now the first 
goal scorer in Minnesota history. How about that for Taylor Heisey, just 23 years old. From and, Lake City, Minnesota. And her, her head coach, Ken Klee, telling us that she's really the complete package and she wants to be the best player in the world and works so professionally to get there. To Panny, the Finnish native, trying to send one towards Frankel. Again, it is Taylor Heisey. 356 in the first period. She breaks the scoreless tie. It's 1 0 Minnesota. Boston trying to regain their footing as the visitors strike first. Maida hopped off the stick of Je Jessica DiGirolamo as well and beat Frankel in the top left corner over her stick side. Here's Alina Bueller, third overall pick in the draft and the first by Boston. First line out there for PWHL Boston. Knight bounced it off the back of goal, so retreating now is Gigi Marvin to pick it up. Stepping through. Here's a shot and a save by Hensley. Obviously for both of these teams, it's going to be a work in progress as the season goes on. So this first game really a feeling out where you want your lineup to end up. Special teams also a work in progress on both of these sides as they haven't had a lot of time to practice. Deck line as well, Kelly Panic, the national team. Happy to have Kendall Coyne Schofield as his captain, as somebody that he's worked with before. He said she's a little pit bull. He called her fast, tough, and mean. So you'll see that from her on the ice today. Here's Dee George, who finished up her college career at Ohio State, won a national championship in 2022. Played her first four years at Bemidji State in Minnesota for taking that grad transfer year with the Buckeyes. And Boston breaks away now. This is Jamie Lee Ratchet. She'll come off for a change with everyone except Sophie Shirley. Just about seven minutes gone in the first period. If you're just joining us, it was Taylor Heisey with the first goal of this game at 3.58. Backhand pass by Mueller in front. Knight spinning around, and it's just wide. And that's what you'll notice from Mueller. If you watch any of her play in college, she's such a great playmaker. She'll pass to the open player. She's a very unselfish player. And a lot of those points that we've mentioned, she holds the record for Northeastern history in points. A lot of them coming off assists because she's such a great playmaker. Free flowing game so far, just one icing. Emily Brown snaps it to her right, looking up ahead. This is Lauren Gable. Gable won a Patty Kazmaier Award at Clarkson. She loses an edge, arms stay down. Yeah, that looked like it might have been called a trip, but the ref's letting it go. Something we've seen through the first two games in the PWHL, the whistles have kind of been away. The precedent has been to really let play go on. And Turnover, another goal! It's Sophia Kunin. She doubles the Minnesota lead. It's 2 0. Once again, going in the exact same spot that Taylor Heisey scored, going high and going off the bar and in. And so Boston finds themselves down by two early. We'll take a look at the replay. As you can see, the battle won along the boards by Minnesota. And that shot, just, she just gets it off so fast. And that's how you have to beat Erin Frankel. She doesn't give you any easy ones. And, you know, she's used to playing in college, and these are pros. And so the speed that things happen is just a little bit faster. And Bridget, with both goals for Minnesota, they didn't really have all five set up in the Ozone, right? It was Boston trying to get out the other way, and then quickly Minnesota comes back, snaps a quick shot. What a start by PWHL Minnesota in their first game. Two goals in the first eight minutes of this one. And they have the home crowd silenced for the time being. 
you know, you get lucky if you're Minnesota and you get that number one pick. You have the choice of anyone off the board, and it was a great choice to take Taylor Heisey with that number one pick. Off angle shot goes off the glove of Frankel. Trouble in front, but Boston's off to the races the other way. Hit off of a leg, and Mueller slows down. Alina Mueller from Switzerland has had a storied career on the international stage herself. Back at the left point now is Gable, tries to send it in front, went off of the eight of Susanna Tapani. Yeah, Mueller, a two-time Olympian herself, and the only Swiss player in the PWHL. A lot of different countries represented across the six teams, of course. Canada, number one, United States, number two, but you got players from Austria, Czechia, Switzerland, and more. And this Minnesota team has the most Americans of any team. 20 Americans on the team, four Canadians, one Finn, and one from the Czech Republic. Battle along the far side boards now, right in front of the penalty box. It's been a clean game so far. No penalties. Heisey's goal was unassisted. There was an assist credited to Britton Fleming on the Sophia Kunin goal. So that's her first point of her PWHL career. Fleming is from Oregon, Wisconsin, and played with the Minnesota Whitecaps in the PHF. On the red line it goes. Trying to snap it away is Ratre. Ratre runs into Kunin, who does a good job sealing it off. Lost her stick. But stepping through now, Shepherds. Shepherds, left wing circle, low in front. Get off of the stick head and back towards the boards. Two on two in the corner, it's Keller who comes away with it. Keller played in the PWHPA last season with Team Scotiabank. There was the PWHPA, there was the PHF as well. This year, a united front from all players making the PWHL one that fans are truly excited about here in the new year 2024. Laherty dumps it into the corner. Minnesota changes. Sydney Morin gets it. Here's Morin again. Morin was actually drafted by the opponents here tonight. She was drafted by Minnesota, then was picked up on waivers by Boston head coach of PWHL Boston, Courtney Kessel said that was a nice Christmas present for our team. Yeah, that's a really big pickup and definitely interesting in this league being able to put players on waivers and have these free agents signing. It's different than what teams have dealt with in women's pro hockey in the past. Obviously, the contracts are different, system more similar to the NHL. A player to watch, Alina Mueller for this Boston team. We mentioned her prowess in international play for Team Switzerland, getting her start there at age 15. And she was nominated for the Patty Kazmaier Award, a top 10 finalist in every season she played all five years at Northeastern. She's someone we'll hear a lot about uh, the whole season. Loose rebound in front, backhand, and it goes wide of Frankel. Boston with a dangerous rebound led up by Aaron Frankel, but it stays 2-0. Boston looks to clear here, backhanded ahead by Hillary Knight. You mentioned Mueller and the fact that she was playing on the international stage at age 15. Not only playing on the international stage at age 15, what a bronze medal at the 2014 Olympics in Sochi. Go. She also speaks four languages, wow. being from Switzerland, uh, speaking a lot of different languages to different teammates. She used to speak French to her teammate Goyo Rar at Northeastern, who now Plays for New York in the PWHL. Rar had a great opener, two assists and a 4 0 win on New Year's Day. Everyone from that top line at Northeastern, a high draft pick into the PWHL. And I feel like the timing was great for them. Coming out of college only a year before the league started, they were prepping for it. And, you know, coming immediately into the pros after college was ideal for them. A lot of these. Women have been waiting a long time for it. That was one of the things that Boston head coach Courtney Kessel told us was, I can't believe that Alina Mueller just graduated from college. It feels like she's been playing with the Swiss team forever, it seems. Well, she has. Yeah. Almost 10 years now. Fighting for the puck now is Taylor Girard. Girard played with the Connecticut Whale in the PHF last season. 
It's picked up there by Cheyenne Gargantula. She sends a shot front, rebounds loose, and then Hensley makes the save. Anna Brandt, a diving shot. What a play, such a quick pass too, through the slot. You see Dark Angelo sending kind of a pass off the pads. It comes out to Brandt. She looks like she almost put it five hole. She's unable to get that goal. Abby Cook, a nice job defending as well. Native of British Columbia, played in the Swiss League last year. Played four years at Boston University. Playing in familiar territory here in Massachusetts. Puck stood up behind Minnesota's goal. Hensley has been solid so far, stopping all four shots that she's faced. Kudin tries to send it off the boards into herself, runs into the corner against Gigi Marvin. Minnesota trying to make something happen. It trickles past the blue line, so they'll regroup. Fleming harassed from behind. Brandt the other way. Beautiful pass. Here's Brandt. Brandt. Low shot and a save by Hensley. Hannah Brandt, the Minnesota native, starting to assert herself here late in the first period. Yeah, and that that line has been really finding a way to click in this last few shifts. Low shot, deflection. Frankel covers up. Barrett Frankel starting to get into her groove. Head coach Courtney Kessel in the first season as the head coach of PWHL Boston. Had coaching experience on the national stage with Team Canada. Was also an assistant coach at Princeton University for four years. Here's a nice pass by Knight. Jammed out in front. And Mueller got stood up a couple times to the corner she goes. Slammed into the glass by Steckline. And an arm goes up. We have our first penalty of the game. Steckline just pushing Alina Mueller into the boards a bit there. Two minutes for hooking the call. And this Boston team, when we talked to Courtney Kessel, she mentioned that her team still working on the power play as things go on, wanting to install things and not rush the installation. So the power play will get tinkered with. Jake's looking across and oh, what a deflection in front. Sliding over was Zumwinkle as Mueller had a beautiful look on the left wing circle. It's Mueller out there with Jake's Gable Keller as well as Hillary Knight. That's the first line of the power play at least early on this season, about 40 seconds gone as Gable backtracks by her own blue line and steps up. Gable flipping it ahead, tries to track it down. Minnesota can't clear there. Jake's now. Jake's up against Emma Greco against the glass. Boston comes away with the puck. Back to the point. Here's a big shot deflected and wide. Sydney Morin let it rip from the blue line. We haven't got a chance to talk a lot about this Boston decor, but this is the top defensive pair, Megan Keller and Sydney Morin, both out there for this power play. And I really think that this Boston team can generate a lot from this defense. It's like the second line out there now, Teresa Shopsall with Jamie Lee Rattray, as well as Sophie Shirley, Sydney Morin. Frankel spins it along. Teresa Schaffsall, native of Wies, Austria, was the seventh round draft pick by PWHL Boston in September. And Minnesota is able to kill off their first penalty. Yeah, a clean kill for Minnesota. They were able to take advantage of a clear, an accidental back pass by Mueller that didn't connect with Keller at the blue line, so they got that free clear. And they really only allowed one good chance on that Boston power play. Here's Brandt. Brandt makes a move. Brandt tries to win it back, but good defense once again by Melissa Channel. No shots registered on Boston's first power play of the season. They did get some good looks, like you said, Bridget, but how about this Minnesota defensive unit? They've done a really good job disrupting passes, making things tough for Boston in their ozone. 
They're, they're certainly doing a good job in the neutral zone as well. You've seen Boston kind of struggle with that transition a little bit, and they're not allowing them to come cleanly through. As you can see, that redirection in center ice. D. George had it for a moment. Boston has numbers. Mueller has wheels. Here's Mueller. Pulls back, shoots, and a pad save, Hensley. Gable just wide. Well, you see Alina Mueller, 11 in green in open ice, and it could be trouble. Mueller again, and Hensley covers up. Yeah, that chance by Alina Mueller was one of the best looks this Boston team has seen all game. You see her take it all the way through the neutral zone herself, make a move around her defender and shoot low into the pads, just almost picking that right side post. And this line is buzzing as well. You get the sense that that power play is given a little bit of momentum to Boston. Boston wins the face off cleanly. Keller, a big shot, and Hensley somehow holds it up under that left pad. Boston finding the counter here as of late. And you have to imagine as a goaltender as well, for Aaron Frankel, just wanting to get settled in now that she's given up the two goals and get a little bit of goal support from the offense. A goal for Boston in this last minute would go a long way heading into the locker room for the first intermission. Minnesota jumped on top of Boston in the first eight minutes. It was Taylor Heisey unassisted at 358, the first overall pick in the draft, showing why she was selected there. And then Sophia Kunin off of a Boston turnover at 7.54 with an assist from Britton Fleming made it 2 nothing. Pass behind for Dark Angelo. Her shot is blocked in front. Nice job by Melissa Channel, defenseman from Manitoba. Played the last four years in the PWHPA. Also played with the Toronto Furies in the CWHL. 10 seconds left in the first period here at the Sangha Center. Channel looking for Heisey for one last chance, but it's interrupted by Boston, and we enter the first intermission with a 2 0 Minnesota lead. Fleming, the puck is dropped. Let's go to period two. Home opener for Boston here in the 2024 PWHL season, the inaugural season in this 16 league. So happy to be bringing you tonight's coverage from the campus of UMass Lowell. Beautiful facilities here. We haven't talked enough about the Sanga Center yet, but Co Coach Courtney Kessel on the Boston side was raving about this facility, the people that work here, all of the hands that go into making tonight what it is. And one of the big differences between this league and women's professional leagues in the past is that every facility that these six teams play in is so great. Here's a shot in Hensley with the save. Yeah, we'll get another look. Diving defensive play, but she got her to commit a little bit early. And Hensley having to make the stop. So Boston trying to come out quickly in the second. Quickly sending shots on goal. That might have been a point of emphasis with Coach Kessel and company in the locker room. Rifled just wide by Emily Brown. She's from Blaine, Minnesota. Or the A with the Golden Gophers was the captain her last two seasons as well. Brown had a five-year career with the Golden Gophers, played in 167 games. Rattray taking a bit of a check along the board. She'll head off to the Boston bench. Opposite side now, this is Kelly Panic. Panic from Plymouth, Minnesota. Let's talk about the Minnesota connections on this visiting team. 13 of the 27 players on the roster were born in the Gopher State. Even more impressive, 16 of the 27 played college hockey in the state of Minnesota. So that could be University of Minnesota, Minnesota State, Minnesota Duluth, Bemidji State. A lot of good hockey teams up there. Yeah, and, and really Minnesota with a lot of players on every team in this league because it's such a great hockey state. We see a lot of connections on both teams to Minnesota as well as Boston because those are two areas that have some of the best hockey schools in the country for college. Something head coach Courtney Kessel talked with us about this week was there's so many skilled prep schools and high schools here in the state of Massachusetts. 
And we do have a penalty against Boston. I believe this is a delay of game. And it's Di Girolamo who will sit for two minutes. So now the first time that Minnesota is on the man advantage here tonight. Get a look at their first line on the power play. They got Shepers out there as well as Heisey. Bookbinder, coin in front. And the sixth and final is Denisa Krizova. Here's Krizova stepping up. Nice pass to Heisey. She shoots, but a big block. The captain, Hillary Knight, stepped in the way. Uh, Heisey, you can already see her movement in the offensive zone on this power play. She's not staying stagnant. She's finding ways to open up those passing lanes and shooting lanes for her. Nice clear by Boston to the opposite corner it goes. Hensley's out of goal, but a little pressure from behind by Hillary Knight. No problem for Nicole Hensley. Well, and the new rule in this league is if Boston scores a shorthanded goal here, they will get their player out of the box. So that's one big difference between the NHL as well as college in this PWHL. Yeah, huge difference. You score a shorty, you also clear the penalty. And I wonder if that really changes the approach. Alina Mueller has been someone that has been great shorthanded, so you know, maybe she can give this Boston team an advantage on the penalty kill. She can be aggressive. Yeah, if you looked at the penalty killing unit for Northeastern last year, it basically looked like their power play. Chloe Arar had a ton of shorthanded goals as well. We referenced her player on PWHL New York. And that's because both players, her and Mueller, are so sound defensively as well as aggressive offensively, so they're never going to make uh, the rushed play. They are always going to do the same thing. There's a shot from Zumwinkle, and it's blocked again. Boston stepping in these shooting lanes during Minnesota's first power play. Just two seconds left, and we're back even, full strength. Still a chance for Minnesota. Heisey winds up. Pardon me, that was to Panny. But a save by Frankel. Frankel let up the first two shots that she faced into goal. Minnesota with no shots on their power play just now. Yeah, that was a strong penalty kill for Boston, like you mentioned, just stepping in the way. And an important kill as well because they're not trying to go down by three. They need to chip away at this lead and score the next one. This is Mueller. Mueller backhands it to the outside. This is Morin now. Morin, puck got up vertical, but bounced off the end of goal. Boston following that penalty kill with another shift from the first line. Icing. Girolamo circling behind goal, passes it back to the top. Right point now. Snap down low and past Lauren Gable. Hillary Knight is there. Knight, a four-time Olympian. Three silvers, one gold in 2018. And she has scored some big goals on the international stage. Goals in each of the last two gold medal games. A loss in 2022 and a goal in that thrilling shootout victory for Boston, excuse me, for United States in 2018. Well, Hillary Knight really is synonymous with U.S. hockey. In front, backhand shot. Oh, it went wide a goal. Hensley might have got a piece, but it was Lauren Gable with a great chance. She was trying to get under it, lift it up on the backhand, a really quick shot. Love down, Jean Girolamo to her left. Getting a stick on it just a bit was Melissa Channel, Boston. Fiery right now in the Ozone. Brandt tonight on the left side boards. Blocked. Gerard picks it up. Gerard left wing circle. And Hensley wisely covers up. Knight just one registered shot. She was also named the 2020. IHF Female Player of the Year, has been a captain with Team USA as well, won two national championships at the University of Wisconsin. It was a three-time Patty Kazmaier top 10 finalist, never actually won the award, surprisingly. Yeah, that's pretty hard to believe. I think she's more than made up for it at the pro level, what do you think? You can say that she maybe proved those <laughs> voters wrong in her career. Knights from Sun Valley, Idaho. Really likes the city of Boston as well. Has been raving about it since being selected. Here's Heisey, watch out! Heisey, and it's blocked. Great recovery by Sydney Morin. Heisey 
Gets it over to Kramer. Almost turned over, but safely back to Abby Cook. At the red line now. Sticks fighting for it. Kramer to the outside, bounces it off of the boards. Keller tries to steer it the other way. Megan Keller stepping through. One of the alternate captains circles back and sends it down low. Trying to find Teresa Shopsall in the corner. Mentioned Shopsall's great career at Vermont. Keller winds up and a save by Hensley. Rebound and another save. Keller has a rocket, and when she lets it rip, good things can happen. Another shot, bounced in front, Shopsall scores! Teresa Shopsall, the first goal in PWHL Boston season. Wow, a great shift by this first line, and great to make history for Teresa Shopsall. We were just mentioning how she had such a great, great offensive career for UVM, and now the first player in Boston history to score a goal in the PWHL. A, a strong shot from the point from Megan Keller starts this entire thing out. And you see Shopsall pick the post, and she beats Hensley for the first time, ending her shutout. And it's the Austrian native, Teresa Shopsall. Seventh round pick by Boston, who scores the first goal of this team's season. Mueller wants more. Mueller gets to the outside, slows it down, tries to flip the ice, and it went off of the skate of Zumwinkle. Yeah, that's that second line for Boston. You kind of started to see them get buzzing at the end of the first period. A few strong shifts in the second, and that's a big goal because the next goal was going to really make this either a 3-0 game or a 2-1 game, it would have made it closer, maybe a little bit too far out of reach. So that all-important goal for Boston to get back into this game. Yeah, it looked like a, another shot chance that kind of got blocked in front, bounced her way. She settles it down between the circles and scored. Well, it really was just a lot of chaos out in front of the net of Hensley, kind of hard to keep track of those Boston players as they were crossing, not knowing exactly who was going to shoot, and it's Shopsall. Shopsall was the first ever top 10 final. Oh, watch out. Another goal for Minnesota. It's Susanna Tapani moments after Boston's first goal. Check that. Grace Sumwinkle gets credit for it. Bar down, and it's 3-1 Minnesota. Well, that really must be the scouting report on Aaron Franco. Look at that move in the neutral zone by Channel to set up this shot, high slot with speed. Zumwinkle able to go high off the crossbar and down. So Frankel has been beat up top, all three goals by Minnesota. Gable all alone sends that one into the netting from an off angle. Every single goal in this game for both teams has come off of really quick opportunistic plays. And that was just a, tr a quick transition, a little bit of a play on the rush, and a goal from the slot from Zumwinkle. Zumwinkle from Excelsior, Minnesota, won a silver medal with Team USA in 2022. Played at Minnesota for five seasons. And was a top 10 finalist for the Patty Kazmaier Award last year. Third round draft pick of Minnesota. Talk about a response by the visitors right when Boston cut it to one. Minnesota with an answer from the other side. And really what that does is cut the momentum. It has been the away team that's won every game so far in the PWHL, two other home openers. So back to the Teresa Shopsall goal. The assists go to Jamie Lee Rattray, the alternate captain, as well as Sophie Shirley. On the Grace Zumwinkle goal, the assist goes to Melissa Channel. So we've had four different goals in this game. No player with more than one point in this one as well. Assists spread evenly. A couple unassisted goals as well in this one. And what you want to see is points from throughout your lineup. If you're Coach Ken Klee of Minnesota, you're happy to see that you're getting contributions from not just your your first round draft pick, Taylor Heisey, but you're getting it from throughout the lineup. Zumwinkle is listed on that second line at right wing, playing with a longtime Finnish 
native and international playing veteran, Susanna Tapani. She was out there when the goal was scored as well and made a great point there, Bridget, as well, that Minnesota is hunting high and they're hunting in the corners to try to beat Aaron Frankel. Yeah, Aaron Frankel, so good in net in her collegiate career and also really respected. There's a chance and it's blocked. It was Taylor Girard who tried to tee that one up. Yeah, she's really respected in the pros already. She was signed before the draft even started. Izzy in transition now, but Keller seals her off. Make sure she can't get to the boards quickly. Sydney Morin ties her up there. Puck squirts out. Heisey has it. Heisey zips it to the open ice. Finds Maggie Flaherty. Flaherty steps down to the goal line. And Boston tries to clear. Right in front of the Minnesota bench. Morin goes the opposite way. Deflected off of Tapani there at the red line. Larry hammers it deep while most of Minnesota goes for a change. Frankel got caught between two Minnesota players there for a moment. And she stumbled a little bit on the way to the front of her net. Just over eight minutes left in the second period. Minnesota three, Boston one. We saw two Minnesota goals in the first. And a goal for each team here in the middle frame. Shops all, springs it out to Rattray. Rattray looks to her right. Oh, just wide. Sophie Shirley with a good look. Strong, another strong shift from that line. Possible two on one. Frankel the save. Zumwinkle wanted another. We talked about a lot of firsts happening in this league. We have not seen a hat trick yet, so the offense in this game, there's been so much of it so far. Maybe that's something that we can see. We saw the first franchise goals for both of these teams already. Shopsall for Boston Heisey. A lot of speed for Cava, but it's Frankel who covers it up. We have quite a few uh, stars from professional men's hockey in the crowd tonight. Patrice Bergeron joined us for the opening puck drop, but Don Sweeney, the Boston Bruins general manager in the suite as well. And Adam McQuaid, one of his scouts and player development people up in the box. And it's important for them to come out and support Danielle Marmer, who was part of the Bruins organization. She made history with the Boston Bruins working as a scouting assistant and in their player development role. And now her coming here to be the general manager of this Boston team. She's part of that Bruins family as well. Yeah, Marmer, a huge piece that helped bring Patrice Bergeron into the building here tonight. If you missed it pregame, it was Patrice Bergeron with three of his four kids who had the ceremonial puck drop. Cunnan looking back in front, centering feed. Puck is loose. Frankel makes the save, and it's flicked out. But Bergeron dropped the puck with his children, Zach, Victoria, and Noah. The only one missing was his fourth and most recent child, Felix. That's Felix, Felix is also a baby. welcomed into the world in April, I yes. believe. So not quite old enough. We'll get him in skates at some point. <laughs> and you mentioned Danielle Marmer, the first GM in PWHL Boston history. She had a great playing career in Quinnipiac down in Connecticut played four years with the Bobcats. And there's a lot of connections to Quinnipiac on this team. Three players drafted from Quinnipiac, Taylor Gerard, Dark An uh, Cheyenne Dark Angelo, and Nicole Costa all coming from Quinnipiac. And really talented people across the league. Six GMs, as well as the Board of Governors, who we highlighted in the first intermission, will have a chance to talk with Stan Kasten, who is really key in this leadership group. The Mark Walter group as well on the Board of Governors and in a leadership president and CEO role with the Los Angeles Dodgers as well. We look forward to talking with him at the second intermission. Off of the end boards now, Boston trying to cut this deficit to just one. Now it's sprung out the other way. Zumwinkle finding her stride. Zumwinkle tries to turn the corner. Oh, she ran into the post and collided. All at the end boards. That was a strong move by Zellmichel. Back and forth we go. Last five minutes of the second period. Boston finding themselves in the same position as they did at the end of the first, down by two. 
Puck finally comes free. Minnesota controls, gets it to the outside, trying to clear now. Zumwinkle's been all over the place. This is her on the puck now. Gets it ahead to Kelly Panic. Panic. Played college hockey at the University of Minnesota. To Panny. And a save by Aaron Frankel. PWHL merch is on sale now. The official online shop of the PWHL is now open. Gear up for game day with jerseys and apparel. For your favorite team, visit shop.pwhl.com to complete your game day fit. I look forward to making many purchases on shop. PWHL.com. You know what I was looking at? The pucks are great, a great momentum for this first game. I was actually thinking about going down and getting them myself because this is a historic event for all of us. You and I enjoying it as well. And I've seen some really great jerseys out in the crowd. Some people already with their Boston PWHL jerseys in the crowd. Quick shot off of the faceoff, and it was Kava who caught Frankel by surprise for a moment. Frankel making the save with that left arm. Aaron Frankel. Let up two goals on the first two shots that she's faced, but she's been very solid since. Letting up three total tonight, making nine saves. On the other side, Nicole Hensley has made 15 saves on 16 Boston shots. Here's Mueller. Mueller looking in front, wants a redirection. Oh, it just stays out somehow, some way. That didn't go in. It was Lauren Gable on the doorstep once again. Knight thwacking at it. Hensley another save. Wrap around on the other side, and Gable is stood up once again. Two great plays in front of the net. Gable and Knight with some prime scoring opportunities. Knight using her body there. You saw her getting physical in the crease, taking away the eyes of Hensley as well. And I mean right in front of goal. They are all up in Hensley's grill, and somehow it stays out. She's someone you don't want to let in that Ooh. area. If you can clear her out of there, you really should. She's obviously a great shooter from all areas of the ice, but you give her that close a shot, she's going to make you pay. Chops all. Punch saved by Hensley. Whoa. This one comes up into the Boston bench, and we have a moment to breathe here with 2.41 to go in the second. Let's look at some of those last few opportunities. It's the top line for Boston. Gable with a chance on this side, then she takes it behind the net, and she'll get it back out for Knight. And Mueller, like we mentioned, such a great playmaker, finds Knight open in the crease. And she fought through that contact to try to get the shot on goal, but Nicole Hensley standing tall. How about the performance from Nicole Hensley? 29-year-old goalie from Colorado who has been outstanding. Played in the PWHPA last year with the 257 goals against average. Has played in five IIHF World Championships. Had a great college career at Lindenwood University in Missouri. The interesting thing about this Minnesota team is they have four goaltenders, all with different but good pedigrees. And so Hensley being that top draft pick, one of two drafted goaltenders. Maddie Rooney, the other goalie dressed for tonight's game on the bench. She also is an Olympic silver and gold medalist. And when we talked to Coach Ken Lee, he said, it's really gonna be a battle the whole season for who gets the start. Hensley making a great case for herself, but this is really something developing. And Fraud Frankel makes the same. She came to this team as a camp invitee undrafted. Crazy. It is, it really is. It's just the depth at goalie that Minnesota has this season. Minnesota is the only roster I've seen so far with four goalies as well. You mentioned that. Boston carries three. It is Aaron Frankel, Emma Soderberg, and oh, just last year's national championship goalie, Cami Cronish. And he, Coach Ken Cleed told us that he wants to make sure all of them are sharp, so he doesn't want them to be sitting for too long. He said, it's a great problem to have. I have to keep people sharp and in the game, so I expect a rotation on this Minnesota side. Hensley sealing off the post. It was Hannah Brandt. She had a couple great shots in the first period as well. Brandt playing against her home state team. She's from Minnesota. We're up in Bad Nays Heists. As Keller backtracks with less than a minute to go. Does either team have a goal left in store before we hit the break? Or will Minnesota Enter the locker room up by two for the second straight intermission. It was 2-0 at the end of one. 3-1 right here. Mueller 
Ooh, she's trying to find Knight, but she gets it back. Mueller, opposite side. De Girolamo plays it off the boards and goes to the end boards. Mueller, far side. 20 seconds left. Finds Rattray. A lot of great scorers out there right now. Knight, behind her back, was looking for Mueller. Still 12 seconds for Minnesota to work with, but it stood up in the neutral zone. And out to the opposite end. Five seconds to go. Does Knight have a magic left? She shoots! Hensley, a glove save! Just one second left on the shot when this save is made. Knight trying to get the goal before to beat out the clock. Look at how high and rising that shot is. Not many players can make that shot in this league. She gets a lot on it. Trying to go glove side. Hensley making a stop. That'll do it for period number two. Hillary, thanks so much for joining us. Let's uh, talk about the anticipation and the moment leading up to this game. What was the emotion like as you started your first ever game in the PWHL? Yeah, I mean, it's something that everyone uh, dreams about when they're a young girl. Um, and to finally see this through and, and have a place to play at the professional level and all the resources and support that goes with it. It's truly a dream come true. So it's a special moment. Obviously, you have to switch hats really quickly. As soon as the puck drops, you got to go out there and play hockey. How much does it mean to you to be named captain of this team? It's a, it's a huge honor. Um, whenever you're trusted to lead a group, especially of some of the best players in the world, I mean, you can't take that lightly. The biggest thing is just serving that team, serving the city of Boston. And, um, you know, it's, I don't really know how to put it in words other than that. Hillary, some great looks for your team there in the second period. Good luck in the third. Thank you very much. A goal for each team. Boston got on the board thanks to Teresa Shopsall. And then a quick response from Grace Zumwinkle and Minnesota. Boston opened up a bit of a lead in the shots on goal category. Yeah, they did. They had more opportunities. But really, it's been Nicole Hensley that's been key for this Minnesota team. Their offense has been good in spurts, but Hensley able to stave off especially some great opportunities from the first line as we see their Zumwinkle goal. She also looks sharp in the second period. A delay a game early in the second period against Boston's Jessica DiGirolamo, and neither team had a shot on their power play. No, they didn't, and it's been a fairly clean game so far. We saw some big hits in that Toronto game. It seems like this has been more of a finesse game for this Boston and Minnesota squad. Well, when we asked head coach Courtney Kessel about the identity that she sees with this team, one of the first things that she said was that ozone presence and skill. And you can see it with these scores. Here's Hillary Knight, pulls back, backhands, tries to find a teammate, it's in! They call it a goal! Elena Mueller! Wow, and this one's definitely gonna get looked at. It looks like there might have been goaltender interference. Hensley talking to the officials. They're also checking to see if, if she's okay, but Alina Mueller able to take advantage of the chaos out in front, getting her first goal in the PWHL. The top line center for this Boston team will get another look. Hillary Knight skating and throwing the, shot, the pass on the backhand. As you see, it's her own player. Hensley getting knocked down by her own defenseman, Maggie Flaherty. So that's the contact. There's not going to be any goaltender interference from that angle. We get the overhead view as well. That's just a tough thing. It actually looked like yeah, upon that view, hard to see if it crossed the line I at all. I think the next question is, did it cross the goal line? No, no goal. goal. Wow. So Alina Mueller's first PWHL goal is taken off the board. Nicole Hensley with a bit of a smirk and a look towards her bench. The play was entirely set up by Hillary Knight, who had a chance for a shot, instead backhanded it to her line mate and center, Alina Mueller, and fired from about the left point. And on the ice, it was called a goal after a brief review. They say no goal. The referees here tonight are Kelly Cook and Jordan Deckard. Minnesota with a chance. Flaherty looking for a deflection. Zumwinkle couldn't steer it towards goal. Emily Brown in the corner now. Closed in on by Tapani. Far side it comes. Brown tries to clear. It does. Lauren Gable is there, but it's sent back in by Minnesota. They were off sides. Frankel slows it down for Dietzer Alamo. Sophie Shirley cross ice. Nice pass. This is Schaffsall working through. Now Ratchray. Near side boards, Rattray backhands it down deep. 
stops all. Tries to shimmy it past. Boston keeps it in. Nice job with the skate by DiGirolamo. Red line is sent into the opposite corner. Hensley pokes her stick at it, setting it up for Lee Steckline. Watch out here. This is DeGeorge. DeGeorge all alone. Backhand shot. Frankel makes the save. And there was some contact there on the follow through. Boston the other way, a little bit ahead of Dark Angelo. As DeGeorge was streaking in from that right side, had a good look. Yes, yeah, she did. And because she was getting a shot off, the contact with Aaron Frankel doesn't result in a penalty. Corner now, Darkangelo trying to draw it loose. Darkangelo played with the Toronto Six last year, won the Isabel Cup Championship in the final year of the PHF. Wrap around! Hensley the save. What a good look by Hannah Brandt. Brandt has been all around the net this entire game. You see her not being afraid to shoot. We'll get a look at this Minnesota chance on the opposite end of the ice. Trying to go on the backhand, Frankel able to block it. You see the contacts there at the end. No goalie interference called, and then the wraparound try by Hannah Brandt, trying to sneak it by the post in the foot of Hensley. Brandt won three national championships at the University of Minnesota in 2013, and then back to back in 15 and 16. She's been great tonight. Here's Gable, nifty stick work, lost the puck. In the corner she goes, finds Knight. This is the top line for Boston. Gable looking in front. Keller keeps it in. Keller tries a low shot. Hensley covers up. Near side boards now. Boston trying to keep it in the zone. You notice Megan Keller has gotten her shot through a few times from the point. And what's good about that is getting the rebound if that puck comes back out. Looking for Knight. It was Gable on the left side. And here's the captain, Kendall Coyne, Schofield. Schofield gets back to center ice. And Frankel steps up to send it ahead. Gable off to the races. Lauren Gable stays on side. Tapani sends it back where Minnesota slows things down. Sheppers. Harassed from behind, looked like Wenskowski who stepped in there. Near side boards now by the Boston bench. Pelkey comes away with it. Pelkey outnumbered. Oh, we got a penalty. Pelkey was sent down to the ice. Boston should be going on the power play. Yeah, too much contact along the boards as you see. The guilty party. Two teams with players like Kendall Cohen, Schofield and Hillary Knight that are both Really physical players. We get a look. She just gets canceled. Pelkey taken down a little bit too late. She had already gotten rid of the puck, so it interference the call. Knight, Mueller, Gable, the lone defenseman with the group is Megan Keller, who has a monster shot that she can unload from the blue line. Austin trying to keep it in the zone. Minnesota did a good job clearing on their last penalty kill, and they'll clear here. Yeah, that time the clear coming from Grace Sumwinkle, one of the goal scorers in today's game. So she's great offensively, and she's going to be part of this Minnesota penalty kill. Yeah, she's had a great game here tonight. This is Gable, right wing circle, slows things down, looking back for Keller. Keller down low, extra pass, loose. Hensley got her glove on it. Nice passing between the circles for Boston, but just lacking that finishing touch. Here's a look at the entry by Gable. Slid to the top of the slot for Keller and kind of tic-tac-toe passing, trying to get it through the crease to Mueller to poke it in. Hillary Knight, once again, you see her swarming the net. Face off one by Boston, but it is past Sydney Morin. So Boston will backtrack with 1.12 to go on their second power play. And also their second power play unit out on the ice. There's Shepard sitting for interference. Warren tried to bat that down with her stick. Instead, it goes all the way back to Frankel. Warren will pause for a moment. Up she comes. Warren to her left, gets it back. Warren spins around, sends it in. Batted down by the stick of Flaherty. Flaherty 
defenseman from Lakeville, Minnesota. On the outside now, back to the top. Morin passes to her left, chops off. And great work by the captain, Kendall Coyne Schofield. Takes the puck away and clears, she runs to the bench. Yeah, Coyne Schofield able to keep the play to the outside and that's the goal of this Minnesota penalty kill. Just don't let Boston get into the slot. Mueller trying to slip through all four. Instead, the puck comes all the way into Hensley, where she covers with 17 seconds remaining. Face off one by Boston. This is Jakes. Jakes passes back to Keller. Keller shoots! She scores! Oh, excuse me! Kept the, out! It went off the post, the oh, left side man. post. Just Keller. that close, though. It's been that close in this third period, and now we're back to even strength. Minnesota kills their second penalty. Oh, it stays out. Jake's might have rang the post as well. <laughs> There's cheering going on. A lot of the crowd thought that did go in. Stays 3-1. Minnesota numbers the other way. Puck stood up. And Gable loops behind Frankel. Wow, some great chances for Boston, but Hensley has put up a force field. One shot for Boston on their most recent power play. Getting a little bit of help from the post on that chance from Woo. Keller. Two players for each team fighting for the puck, and we got a whistle. Knight does a great job to keep it in the Boston Ozone. Gets to the corner, sends it behind goal. Mueller has it now, tosses it out to Keller. Keller to Moore, and she keeps it on sides. Traffic in front, and it's batted down by Minnesota. All started by Hillary Knight. Boston has some more Ozone time here. Gable comes away with it. Gable, pad save, Hensley, and somehow out to the far side boards. There have been rebound chances, but Hensley has steered them all away from goal. She scrambled and got her toe on that rebound chance. We get the icing call. We'll get another opportunity to look at a different angle of that save by Hensley. This top line putting the pressure on. You see Gable shooting to the far side. She gets the foot on it. It may have even been a pass intended for Mueller on the backside post looking to go back door. But Hensley not even allowing the pass to go through. Face off to the left of Hensley, quickly won by Boston. Jakes now passes to the opposite circle. Shot save, Hensley, and again it goes to the outside. Sophie Shirley with the try, looking in front for Rattray. Rattray one on two. Rattray to the corner now, bats it back to the left point. Behind goal it goes, Shirley tried to reach out and stop the puck. It gets to Shopsall, the only goal, for, goal scorer for Boston back in period number two. And now Boston up to 25 shots on goal compared to Minnesota's 15, so up by 10 shots. The pressure is definitely on. This Boston team is playing well. They have gotten a few unlucky breaks. Boston will have at least 11 more home games. It's a 24-game regular season, 12 home, 12 road. Boston's next game is on Monday against Ottawa here at 6 p.m. And Minnesota looking for their home opener coming up later in the month. Minnesota will host Montreal on January 6th. Greco, bouncing puck, is padded away by Frankel. Frankel wearing the red, white, and blue helmet, pads, stick, and glove. It's a camaraderie that happens between these teams. They all feel like they can learn things from each other. A lot of the coaches interact with each other. A lot of the players do. And they're really all in this together, trying to win for Boston and make Boston proud. And Knight has had some fantastic passes. That one didn't get all the way through to Mueller, but she has eyes on the back of her head. It's what makes her such a skilled player. Not just a goal scorer, but a distributor, connecting so well with her teammates. Boston trails by two. We got a whistle down in the Boston Ozone behind the play and a hooking call. We'll see which box opens. It's Boston going back on the power play. Lee Steckline will sit for two minutes. Boston has been the cleaner team, and we saw on that last power play opportunity, they got a lot better passing. They got more movement, and they came really close to scoring, so you see Elena Mueller along the boards taking the hook on the hands, so Steckline 
who's been great tonight for Minnesota, will sit in the box. One of their best defenders, so she'll be off the ice for two minutes unless Minnesota scores a shorthanded goal. Boston's done a really good job winning some of these face-offs on the power play as well. They win one to open up their third power play. Shops all taking her time, stepping to her left. Far side boards, just a bit of a missed pass there, but nice recovery by Morin. Morin has it now. She snaps a shot, pad save, Hensley backhanded in front. Morin had a chance. She comes to the near side. To the end boards it goes. Boston starting with their second unit first on this power play. Morin stepping up to her right, and it's deflected in front. Nice job by Channel, sacrificing the body. Morin has it to the right wing circle to Di Girolamo. Back to Morin. Morin shoots. Oh, might have came all the way into Hensley. And again, she stands tall. Boston going high to low a few times to start this power play, getting those point shots, shooting for rebounds, kind of getting that puck low off the pads of Hensley. They know she's been tough to beat so far. Maybe getting a rebound in the crease could give Boston a chance to score. A lot of speed for Mueller to Gable. Gable trying to go cross ice. Keller now. Keller slows it down. Keller, nice pass to the opposite end. Finds Knight. Knight back to Keller. That pass too hot to handle. Yeah, just a little bit too fast, and Keller will have to retreat into her own end. 7.20 left in regulation. Minnesota has led the entire way. Jumping on Boston with two first period goals. Each team scored one goal in the second. Knight. Tries to pass to herself. Instead, it's intercepted, and Greco clears. Just 18 seconds left for Boston. I'm not going to lie, David. On these penalty kills, I'm kind of just excited. I, I want to see the new rule in play. We <laughs> haven't had a chance. No yeah. team has done it yet, so we're just waiting. It, it does add an extra element to the penalty kill. We can add that to the list of firsts whenever that happens, right? It's a week of firsts here in the PWHL, and Lee Steckline who actually sat for her second penalty in this game is now released and we're back to full strength. Less than seven minutes to go. Nicole Hensley has been awesome tonight in goal for Minnesota. 25 saves on the 26 shots that she's faced. Three shots for Boston on that power play. On that most, re excuse me, total power play. D'Arcangelo now. Boston has numbers if they hustle. D'Arcangelo will flip it to the corner. Hensley's there to play it, but Boston keeps it in the zone. We're down to six minutes left. Boston eyes starting to look up at that clock with a two-goal deficit. Minnesota trying to get a win on the road to start off their PWHL history. Brown backtracks, smacks it ahead. Shirley, right side. Shirley has some space. Sophie Shirley tries to get to the corner. One on two. She falls down. Physical play by Minnesota. Stood up here. Shops off. Able to draw it free. Keller now. Keller swivels back. Keller keeps it in. Megan Keller. Beautiful work. Keller just wide. Keller showing her offensive abilities on that stick handling. Puck slowly saucers all the way back to the opposite corner. No icing, five minutes to go. Crowd, a little bit antsy here as Boston's offsides. Quieting the crowd to put this Minnesota team up three to one and that's where we stand. Bridget, you were all over it after those goals in the first period as well. Minnesota, all three goals, top shelf. I think two of them went far down, if not all three. Really, just picking the perfect spot. You couldn't ask for more perfectly placed shots, and it's no surprise with who's taking them, where they're going, how perfect they are. This is Gable. She's going to wind up, and this one will slam off of the end glass. 429 left, Boston. With some extra oomph on the offensive end. This is Morin. Hensley made the save as the puck's still loose. It's finally covered up outside of the paint. And with the second goal for Minnesota, and she got tied up by Hillary Knight in this scrum. But the refs separate things, no penalties, and we play on. One of the things I love about 
the rule book for this league is that it allows for more physicality for these women. And you're going to see it. You're allowed to check as long as the player is making a play on the puck, which is different than some of the rule books in the past in terms of women's college hockey. And physicality being introduced to this game more and more. I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps trending in that direction and you get closer and closer to those NHL rules. Brant passing behind goal. Here's a shot, and Hensley somehow sees it through the trees on a fantastic night for number 29 in white. Well, if you're, if you're the goaltender for either of these teams, you want to get that first win in franchise history under your belt. And Aaron Frankel just making a break for the Boston bench. So 323 left to play, and Boston with the empty net on the other side. Hensley is the first goaltender in PWHL history with 30-plus saves in a game. In the first two games on New Year's Day and yesterday, no goalies surpassing 29 saves. Corinne Schroeder had 29 saves in a shutout in New York City's 4-0 win. Hensley, though, has surpassed that. We're going to have a penalty here. Keller just got taken down in the corner, went a little bit hard into the board with her feet, and it's once again going to the box. Keller drawing the penalty. We'll see what Boston opts to do. They could go six on four here. They already have Aaron Frankel on the bench, so we'll get another look at this and see what Boston decides for the power play. Contact in the back of the legs there. Keller going into the boards. So Boston with just under three minutes left to play. They do opt to go six on four. Boston is 0 for 3 on their power plays with a combined three shots. They go six on four here. Morin, it was deflected but somehow stays out. GG Marvin was on the doorstep. Morin passes to her left. Keller eyeing a shot from straight away. Ops not and goes back tonight. She'll tee up this time, Megan Keller! It's 3-2! So important to get that goal early on in this power play. Now they leave themselves with 2.40 left to score a game-tying goal. Keller has been shooting well from the point all night. Looks like it may have taken a redirection out in front. Hillary Knight always taking away the eyes of the goaltender. So Nicole Hensley having to battle through the screen. We'll get another look. Keller's one timer from the point. There is Hillary Knight right in front. It does look like it takes a redirection. This should give us a better look from this angle. And it goes into the top corner. Bridget, it was kind of funny. The six players that were out there for Boston, they all they all met up in the little huddle. I saw some shrugging, some did you score it? Did I score it? Knight says, all right, I'll lead the goal rush to the bench and we'll see who they credit it to. But Megan Keller is credited with the goal for the time being. They give the assists to Alina Mueller and Sid Morin. Keller with a monster shot from the blue line. She showed it off here tonight. This is a one goal game, 2.15 left. 1.15 left on the Boston power play. Excuse me, penalty of course cleared, three to two. And, Ali I, and uh, back in net, Aaron Frankel, so they were able to put her back on the ice. I'm wondering if she'll make a break for it once again. Still down a goal. Two minutes left. Crunch time here, and it's a one goal game. Fans are into it at the Sangha Center. Can Minnesota escape, or does Boston have one left? Remember the last time Boston scored, Minnesota responded 55 seconds later. Zumwinkle sent one in. It was blocked away. 135 left. We're in for a thrilling last 90 seconds. Mueller tips it off of the boards, runs it down in the corner. Looks to the opposite side tonight. Morin now as Frankel is back on the bench. Six players in the O zone for Boston. Keller asking for the puck at the point again. I wonder why. This one will go all the way down. Icing. Big face off here. They actually just changed their lines out, so it's Rattray taking the face off. Morin keeps it in. Here's Keller, passes to her left. Here's a shot, Hensley falling backwards. The puck goes behind goal. Less than a minute left. 50 seconds to work with. Shopsall pushed up against the glass. Boston trying to get it up to the point. It goes the opposite way. Keller's there. Nice 
feed. Rattray deflected. And it comes to the near side corner. 35 seconds left. A one goal game. Thanks to a goal just a couple minutes ago from Megan Keller. Net is empty for Boston. Morin looking in front. Deflected. Pushed forward by Minnesota. Morin has it. 20 seconds left. Sydney Morin shoots. And a pad save, Hensley. Shafsal quickly in front. Darkangelo just wide. Backhanded away by Shirley. Can Boston keep it in? Seven seconds left. Keller looking for open ice. Goes to her back. Two seconds. And Hensley makes the save at the buzzer. That's the final. Three to two. Minnesota wins. And in fitting fashion, Nicole Hensley, a save to seal it. You see the smile on her face getting that win. She really fought hard in that final three minutes when Boston had their goalie pulled and the extra attacker on the ice. She did so much to contribute to this Minnesota win.